All right, the campaign you are most proud of. I am most proud of something that I did last year for the Legion, which was called the Ad Advertising Blackout. And that was a, a campaign I cooked up with Ariel Kubi, um, one of our chief creative officers at VML. And we were talking about the um, November 11th silence and how you know, it's a shame that people book meetings for that silence. And maybe it's a shame that you, know, you get served an advert during the 11 a.m. silence. And then we kind of said, hang on, wouldn't it be great if we could just do a blackout of advertising for those two minutes? And that's what happened. The Legion uh, loved it as a way to you know, pay tribute to Canadian veterans. And um, it, it did really well last year. I think it won a couple of awards. And we're doing the 2.0 of it um, this year. So mm -hmm. if you've got any media vendors um, in the listenership, I would love for them to get in touch with me if they'd like to get involved. It literally just means pausing your advertising for two minutes during the November 11th silence. Rory, if they want to get in touch with you to talk about it, how can they contact you? Um, best bet would be add me on LinkedIn, Rory Petty uh, at VML. Your favorite movie? I love movies. I could give you a different movie for every mood that I'm in, um, but I'm going to choose a favorite movie as the movie I would want to watch and repeat the most. If I'm going to watch something again and again, I want to laugh. And I'm unashamed to say my favorite movie is Dumb and Dumber. I love that film as well. I don't think you could make it today because some of the jokes are incredibly cruel, like what they do with the blind kid and the bird having the head taped back on and he sells it to him. Like, yeah. I don't think that would fly. No pun intended because oh. the bird is dead. <laughs> Didn't mean that. But I agree. <laughs> like, that is that is a fantastic film. Oh, it's it's a classic. And, you know, I think it's just one, of, one that always makes me smile. And I watched it with... Um, people I've loved through my life. So it's got a lot of nostalgia built into it for me. If Hollywood were to make a movie based on your life story, who would you want to play you? So I have chosen Paul Rudd to play me because he seems to mix being kind of smart, kind of funny, but he can also do serious, which is, you know, a little bit of me. And um, you gotta love that hair. My follow up, if Hollywood were to make this movie based on your life story, what would you call it? I would call it Never Stop, Never Stopping, because that's a silly um, Andy Samberg film from a few years ago. I'm stealing the title. Um, but people have said that I can be a little bit, you know, relentless and resourceful. And I kind of keep going off that North Star when I, when I want to try and do something. So it's sort of like a, an inspiring film title for me. Your favorite book? I'll choose something serious here. I'm going to choose 1984 by George Orwell. And um, maybe that's a sort of a book that some people are forced to read at school. Maybe I like it because I wasn't forced to read it at school. But when I finally um, came to it about 10 years ago, there was just something brilliant about how it captured this, this world, this like the world that was created in the book. It's so real, so grimy, so, you know, touchable almost. It's like you're there and, it's just, just the drama of the book and what happens to the characters. It's kind of mind-blowing and heart-wrenching at the same time. Your favorite song? I've got to go with my 19-minute deep cut of Purple Rain by Prince here. The best advice you have ever received? You know, thinking about my, my career, I think the best advice I've ever got was from Trent Fulton, uh, who um, you know, said, hey, Rory, you should go work in a creative shop. You'd be well-received there. And you know, there was that... You know, some strategists will often say, you know, imposter syndrome or, you know, lack of confidence in terms of our ideas. And I think we're, we can all feel that way sometimes. But having someone senior just say, hey, this is great. That's a, that's, that's a big deal. So whenever I see good work, um, I always make sure I say it too. But yeah, Trent's advice definitely um, gave me a big push. My signature closing question, if you weren't in media, what would you be doing and why? If I wasn't in media... I would have loved to have been a pilot because of that love of geography and travel and seeing the world. But I was definitely not a, a science student. And I don't think the passengers would have loved someone with a C in physics flying their plane. Um, <laughs> even though, you know, the autopilot helps us out now. Um, and, I, you know, I think my second choice would have been journalism, um, which I, you know, I love words and I love, you know, constructing you know arguments and points of view and trying to persuade people that would have been 
really interesting but realistically I, I had zero contacts in advertising I had zero contacts in journalism it was hard enough to get into advertising so probably wouldn't have ended up a journalist I think you know the realistic answer is I probably would have ended up being a teacher of some kind maybe in a, a high school something like that I, I do like you know sharing um, education and thoughts I am quite patient when I when I do explain things and uh, as a sort of psychological extrovert where I get my energy from from other people it being in a classroom of um, of teenagers although it sounds kind of scary and daunting I think it could give you quite a good yeah you know, buzz in terms of you know trying to shape the next generation whilst they studiously ignore you and you know make signs behind your back <laughs>